boat. What do you mean? Wait, it's missing. I thought you wanted it like this. <gasps> no. Welcome to our whole extension video. <laughs> Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? Charlie? This is our biggest refit project, extending the sugar scoops. After months of planning, research and design, the excitement is in the air as we move into execution. The first step is thrilling, cutting into the boat and removing the back. So when we started this project, we had three main objectives in mind. Um, the first and most important main objective was we wanted somewhere larger to go swimming and diving off. We had the grates and everything here, but they were a little bit uncomfortable for getting in and out of the water, with, especially with bare feet. So we wanted a nice big platform at the back here. What we also wanted was we wanted to increase our buoyancy because we're going to put a whole heap more stuff on the back deck. So we wanted to get a bit more buoyancy down the back and then we wanted a cleaner release from the water. She was bogging down in the back end and being a bit uncomfortable. So what we've done is we've extended her out a bit further. We've batted her back to where the rudders are. And another thing that we're trying to do is if you look here, this is an asymmetrical shape. Now the idea behind this shape was that when you start flying a hull, that this here becomes the flat cross section uh, when you are planing along. Now, <laughs> we don't come even close to flying a hull, so it didn't really work for us. So what we're doing is we're taking it out, making it a flat cross section at the back here as well. We'll show you what we've done over the other side here. So with boats, everything's a compromise, as we all know, and essentially our main priority was a nice big flat platform here to go swimming and diving and get in and out of the tender with. Our second objective is to add a fair bit more buoyancy and then the third one was the clean release from the stern. If we were going purely for speed, when you are extending your boat, the extension start at the centre of the boat and we would have only come out to about here because that would have made a nice clean line all the way up and away we go. We wanted the extra buoyancy and the larger platform. So we've got a little bit of a kick and we're flattening it off. So that there isn't the perfect ideal thing for speed, but it is the perfect ideal thing for us because we preferred the flat form and the buoyancy. What we've also done is we've taken the twist out of the hull. And if you look at the back here, now we've got a nice big flat cross section. We did it so we could bring the sterns up shallower but we also wanted it to be nice and flat so it doesn't slap. If it came up on an angle, the side would slap. So what we're also gonna do is when we fair it up and make it all nice, we will put a little flat edge on here. And what that'll do is make a nice hard corner for the water to release from. And if it comes out flat, it actually tricks the water. The wake doesn't join until further back and it's as if you have a longer water line still, which will help with the speed. But these are our basic principles with the stern extensions. The first step is to get out the grinder and cut up a perfectly good boat, which I found exhilarating. <laughs> and I found it just a little bit scary. I was very impressed with how well she held together and how difficult it was to dismantle. These old crafters feel pretty good. But on to the next part, which was preparing the metal to be welded. 
All the old alloy needed to be polished up and all the imperfections taken out of the metal. We found we needed to soda blast all the shell plating in order to ensure she was fully prepared for welding. Now they're all prepared, we are ready for the next step. Once the sterns are all cut off, then the next step was we needed to make a template. And we wanted the template to match the back here because we needed to get all of the stern plating rolled so it would fit the existing boat. So what we did is we made the template there that fit that side and then we designed how we wanted our sterns to look. And you can see there, there is a considerable amount of difference between those two. So we're taking out the asymmetrical, trying to make it a lot more symmetrical. So this one here actually goes around that way, because they're off centre. And then bring it on out. So then we got the plates pressed, and when the plates came back, they looked like this. This is the finished result. And I know what you're thinking, it's, it's fairly close. It comes back rolled like this in our new shape that we want. So the next step is we cut out our end plate, uh, measure the length that we want, and we start putting our framework in, and we're gonna have a ring frame about here, which is a strengthening frame, and on the inside as well, just to make it all nice and strong all the way to the end. So check it out, we'll show you how we did it. It was at this point that Sam's meticulously designed stern extensions that he had been working on for over six months and consulted numerous reputable boat designers and boat builders came to a halt. We stitched well to the shell plating on to have a close look. It was at this point that it became fairly obvious that although Emma was built from a plan, she may not have been built 100% to the plan. When it comes to boats, the most important principle to follow is, is if it doesn't look right, then trust yourself, because it probably isn't right. And at this stage, things just weren't quite looking right. So a new plan was formed. All right, so we're in the back locker here, and I just wanted to show you what we had to do is, we wanted to batter it as deep as we could, but if we went past this here, which is the carrier bearing for our rudders, then we'd have to do major structural changes. And unfortunately that wasn't in our budget. So the cheapest option we could go is right up to this bulkhead. Now when you're doing it, you can't butt right up to the bulkhead because if you weld it on there and weld everything, that'll be a weak point. So we've gone 100 mil away, which is about as close as you can go. When we run the new frames, they will come in through, go onto this bulkhead, and we'll have gussets on this bit here that will go across. But we had to go just 100 mil back just to maintain some strength into it. Then we've come all the way around, equal with the steps, and then the same on the other side. Now what you can see there, that's the beginnings of a ring frame, just to make it nice and strong. So we'll pop on outside and I'll explain exactly where we're at and what we're doing. Now here you can see we have the shell plating up. Now it looks a little bit unusual. This is where we're at on the outside. Now the reason being is our original plan was to build the framework first get the end plate on, attach everything to the end plate, and then roll the aluminium around it, which is the normal way you would do it. 
but unfortunately what we found when we looked a bit closer is that our hulls aren't exactly the same and they're a fair bit different so we went for a more custom design so that the alley would fit on the hulls better and we'd get us cleaner exit more smoother water flow over it so what we've done is we've mig welded the shell plating to the outside you can see the slot there in the middle that's for the ring and that there is where our backbone will be our main keel plate will go through and then we'll weld the frames in and then put the back on and then we will uh, stitch weld the top on so we're migging all the inside and then we will tig on the outside but we'll get cracking and put the frames together Let's see how we go One thing we love about our aluminium boat is that all the scraps and offcuts, like the skegs we just cut off and the previous sterns, and all the scraps from this project can easily be recycled. We're planning to take a truckload of aluminium to our local recycling center, ensuring that nothing goes to waste. This is one of the reasons why we opted for an aluminium boat. Unlike fiberglass or steel, which can be challenging to dispose of at the end of their lifespan, aluminium is highly recyclable. Plus, as you saw earlier, when we were hammering away at the sterns, it's a tough material that can really take a beating. Our reasoning behind using the MIG welder for the inside was number one, ease of use, and number two, we've got one of the newer MIGs that has an oscillating current, so it was to keep a lot of the heat out of the metal so it didn't warp or pull in certain directions. Once we got the shape that we're happy with, then we go to the outside of the boat. We do a small gouge in either metal in order to then use the big long rods with the tungsten inert gas or TIG use the two metals directly together. All right guys, so one of the final things that we had done was this swim ladder. So it's permanently fixed in place. Uh, we had Robin weld some tabs on. This is actually our old swim ladder that we had Robin modify. Um, so the starboard side has absolutely nothing on it. It's a clear platform, which is great for when we're snorkeling, putting fins on, sitting down. We've got a nice open area. And this side is the side that we normally get it in and out of the tender on. And um, so it's not only a swim ladder where we can get out of the water, but it's also a really nice handheld when we're getting in and out of the tender. So this swim ladder is mounted here and then when we're sailing along, motoring along, we can secure it up and then when we come to an anchorage and we're stopped, the swim ladder will come down and it's just a really nice, easy peasy way to do it and we're really happy with how the swim ladder has come out. It's been really great. All right, so this here is the finished product and boy oh boy, we could not be happier. So basically what happened is the rest of our hull, all the frames in that are to a plan and then everything was what's called English rolled around the outside. Now, what that means is they'll roll the plates in order to fit the framework. And what we found was that on one side, it kicks in a bit further than on the other side. So rather than do everything mathematically, we had to do it by eye. And so we've got a nice smooth transition between the existing hull and our new stern extensions. The consequence of doing that is we had to make our end plate slightly shallower. So it was meant to be 26 millimeters deep. Now it's 24 centimeters deep. So what that means is when we go to do our fairing, as I said earlier, we will make it a bit deeper. We're putting a nice hard edge on it, but we still have this wonderful big 
back platform. But the worst thing that can happen is these can come out of the water, because as soon as these are out of the water, you get slapping. And with an aluminium boat, it might be a little noisy inside. So now, after six months in the making, these are now checked off the refit list. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let us know in the comment section below your thoughts on extending the hulls. A huge shout out to our Patreons. Your support makes these videos possible. Bye guys.